Steph Booth joins us now. It's so good to see you, Steph. And Thank the book you. is called Married to Alzheimer's. Is yes. that what it felt like? Yes. So, yeah, married yes. to the disease almost. In the end, yes. Yeah, must because my Tony really disappeared. And this new man was in the house and he was defined by his illness. And it's so sad, isn't it? It's such yes. a cruel, cruel, horrible, yes, horrible disease. absolutely. You wrote um, a column for the Irish Times, of course. Yeah. Um, did that help you, writing it, getting getting all of these things down on paper? Did that help? Yes, it, uh, it was cathartic, mm. particularly if you'd had um, a really bad day, to right. be able to just write about it and say, this is what happens, this yeah. is what really happens. But it also gave me the opportunity to say, Alzheimer's isn't unremittingly awful. Mm. You can still have wonderful, happy moments together. And that's what... That's what you, you know, that's the whole point of it. The yeah. whole point of looking after him was those moments were for me. Mm. Exactly, exactly. And mm. the column got a huge response. Yes. Massive did. response. Yes. And it really touched people. Yes. Because I guess when you were, we're talking about Alzheimer's now. Yes. But even just not that long ago, people never really discussed it. And it was a real kind of Cinderella, yes. you know, d disease. And people never really spoke about it. And it's really important that we do. This book is like you talking to me. Thank it you. really is. It's like, it really is. Your story. It's very, very honest. Yes. As you said, you know, you, that it, sometimes it was hard, but sometimes there were little glimmers of fun. Yes. Laughter was there. Yes. I mean, there was no point in being dishonest. I think when Tony was first diagnosed, um, I was basically at the doctor's surgery. Yes, he's got Alzheimer's. The brain scan has revealed this. What happens next? Well, we don't know. Just take him home and look after him. Jeez. So and, no support. No yeah. support at all. And I didn't know about the Alzheimer's Society then. And I had to find out about all of that. And, you know, it's, it is it is tough. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, the doctor would have said, OK, well, we do this and we do yes, this and we do this. absolutely. With Alzheimer's, it's a question of, um, well, just muddle through. And people are muddling through even now. Yes, it's a little absolutely. bit better, but it's still really... Well, really you see, I would argue not. Do you not think so? No, because when Tony... Well, you know. When, when, Tony, was, sorry, when Tony was diagnosed, um, there was a lot more in terms of support from adult and social yeah. care. There were day centres were open, but of oh, course with austerity with cuts. and cuts, everything's being cut back, so day centres oh. are closing. It's much more difficult to, social workers are yeah. being cut back. And I think in many ways, people today are having a harder time Jeez. than I did. That's, re that's really, really concerning, it really is. Because, it is. I mean, you had to give up your job. Yes. At times, you could be violent at times. Yes, like like many other people with Alzheimer's, yes. it can manifest itself like yes. that. That's really tough for you to deal with on your own. You must feel so lonely. Yes, it is a, it is a very lonely space. Yeah. But then the other assumption is that if you're a carer, you want to spend all your time with other carers. So, mm. um, the, you know, you, they have clubs and meeting places. And I used to think, well, actually, Tony was in the day centre. This was the opportunity to get my life back. Exactly. I was off down the road. Do something for friends. you. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I didn't that. want to talk to other carers. Yeah. You know, I'd done all of that. Mm. I lived that. I didn't need it in my leisure time too. I understand that completely. He was fiercely proud of all of his children, yes. particularly Sherry, of course. Yes. And she was there. She was there. She was there at the end, wasn't yes. she? Yes. Yes. She was. She managed to come up from London very quickly, and she arrived a couple of hours before he died. And um, she liked singing, so she decided we had to sing to him because hearing is the last thing to go, apparently. Right. And so she had her iPad, and Tony was a dreadful romantic. He loves things like Bette Midler and Roberta Flack. So we sang The Rose and we welled it, you know. Aww. And uh, then we started on um, Roberta Flack. And then she said, oh, look, I found this one here, Wind Under My Wings, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And it was so corny, but it was so typically Tony. He died as we were singing that to As you were singing Wind Beneath My Wings? Yes. Oh, for goodness sake. He was, he was a fascinating fella. Yes. What an interesting man. Yes. I'm sure at times he drove you nuts. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, you, you would never, you, there was never, I would imagine not a dull moment, you know? I was never bored. No. I mean, we could fight each other to a standstill verbally. Yeah, yeah. And it'd be like, all oh, right, OK then. Yeah. And uh, do you want a cup of tea now? You know? But for him to lose that to this horrible illness, very, yes. very sad. Because yes. it, like, it is like somebody dying in front of you. You lose a little bit of them every, every day, I guess. I, th I think it's almost impossible to describe the pain of watching somebody's personality disintegrate in front of you. Yeah. It's indescribable. But then you do have those odd moments when they're back. Yeah. And I got my Tony back. And that was, 
as I said earlier, that that's the hope was the whole point of looking after him at mm. home, because you know, he was he was my Tony. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm. I know what you mean. And those those moments were just yes. just for you. Yes, just yeah, for you. Definitely. I think he'd be really proud of this book. I think he'd be very proud of you. He was determined I should write it because I yeah. I got the contract with Penguin in the June and he died in the September, and he promised made me promise I would write it. Right. And of course, sometimes I just didn't want to. It was just too tough. No, I didn't want to go back over things. Very hard, yeah. And then I thought, well, maybe he won't know if I don't do it, you know. And then I thought, no, he'd come back and haunt me if I didn't write this. <laughs> so you had to do it yes. for yourself and also for him. It's a, it's, yes. a, it's a really, really fantastic insight, not only into what it's like living with Alzheimer's, but also there's a lot of hope there as well, which I really like, yes. Steph. There's hope and there's humour. Yes, because life isn't. <clears throat> if you can't laugh, is, life isn't worth living, is it? Couldn't agree with you more, Steph. Yeah. Married to Alzheimer's, it's out tomorrow. Yes. 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 Good luck with it. Yes, and I hope that somebody reading it, you know, if it touches one person, they think, oh, yeah, I understand that, mm. and I'm not on my own, then that's the point, isn't it? I, I think they will, for sure.